மனநலம் உணர்வு வளம் ஞானம் பொருள் வளம் எல்லா நன்மையும் செய்திடு எல்லோர்க்கும் எல்லா நன்மையும் தந்தருள் குண்டாலினி தாயே விழித்து
Violence continues to be reported from Delhi as we cross more than 80 days since the Citizenship Amendment Act was passed in the Indian Parliament and the opposing sit-in protest at Shaheen Bagh began. To date, 37 lives have been lost and hundreds more injured, including several police officers who were heinously murdered amidst gruesome circumstances. Violence in Delhi has included clear plans to organize violent mobs, as well as the strategic stockpiling of weapons and petrol bombs. In recent days, the roof of a Hindu temple was occupied, as well as neighboring homes. The locations were used to attack neighbors and hurl stones at passers-by. Citizens of Delhi have begun organizing candlelight vigils at the India Gate as a call for peace in the city that has been plagued by reactionary violence. Most of the time human beings find violence to be very charging. The violence-based attitudes may feel exciting, especially when supported by a large number of people. But the violence attitude is neither eternal nor permanent. Even when supported by a large number of people, life-negative violence is never supported by the cosmos. Hindus have started losing the elite culture revealed to us by our ancestors from their thousands of years of research and development. We started behaving as per reactionary assumptions. Anything we feel as our core strength other than pro-life powerfulness is delusion. Trying to eliminate another life is not supported by the cosmos. We become Hindu when we discover the powerful cognitions of Upanishad or Bhagavad Gita, Vedagamas, not just because of who our mother and father are. Hindu lifestyle and thought current is the technology revealed by the Rishis. Powerfulness that comes from our very core is the only sustainable strength, not compounding our violence. The authentic Hindu inner world lifestyle of pure life positivity uncovers a real nuclear force from the core. Life positive, life possible, life powerful, not reactionary violence. Violence continues to be reported from Delhi as we cross more than 80 days since the Citizenship Amendment Act was passed in the Indian Parliament 
and the opposing sit-in protest at Shaheen Bagh began. To date, 37 lives have been lost and hundreds more injured, including several police officers who were heinously murdered amidst gruesome circumstances. Violence in Delhi has included clear plans to organize violent mobs, as well as the strategic stockpiling of weapons and petrol bombs. In recent days, the roof of a Hindu temple was occupied, as well as neighboring homes. The locations were used to attack neighbors and hurl stones at passers-by. Citizens of Delhi have begun organizing candlelight vigils at the India Gate as a call for peace in the city that has been plagued by reactionary violence. Most of the time human beings find violence to be very charging. The violence-based attitudes may feel exciting, especially when supported by a large number of people. But the violence attitude is neither eternal nor permanent. Even when supported by a large number of people, life-negative violence is never supported by the cosmos. Hindus have started losing the elite culture revealed to us by our ancestors from their thousands of years of research and development. We started behaving as per reactionary assumptions. Anything we feel as our core strength, other than pro-life powerfulness, is delusion. Trying to eliminate another life is not supported by the cosmos. We become Hindu when we discover the powerful cognitions of Upanishad or Bhagavad Gita, Vedagamas, not just because of who our mother and father are. Hindu lifestyle and thought current is the technology revealed by the Rishis. Powerfulness that comes from our very core is the only sustainable strength, not compounding our violence. The authentic Hindu inner world lifestyle of pure life positivity uncovers a real nuclear force from the core. Life positive, life possible, life powerful, not reactionary violence.
गगन सदृश तत्वस्यादिलक्ष्यम विमल अचल सर्वदी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गुर तम नमा Nityanandam, I welcome all of the viewers who are gathered here today, awaiting the most divine, beautiful, auspicious happening on planet Earth today. The darshan of Parama Shiva, embodied in Swami Ji, or as the world knows him as His Divine Holiness Sri Nityananda Parama Shiva. I welcome all of the viewers gathered on all the social media platforms Facebook live Twitter Instagram Kailasa TV and so many more other platforms showcased in the temples and satsang centers all over the world It is my honor to be able to do introduce today as we await the satsang to tell the story of how so much is going on so much of persecution against hinduism in a world where we are continuously facing the threats from the outside 
whether it be violence or inner agitation and violence that is stemmed from social conditioning and so much of deep hatred seated inside of us swami ji came to planet earth with the ultimate solution for the problems of the world continuously swami ji has delivered for the past 20 years the ultimate solution Devi Meenakshi was the first and foremost queen. If you see it in an evolutionary perspective, tribes existed all over the world. Humanity was living not in a civilization together, but actually in isolated camps in tribes all over the world. The human being as we know it had not yet evolved to the point of civilization and was just starting to explore language and other forms of technology which is privy to the human brain today that is how old devi meenakshi was it was in a time during the species of human beings was primordial before the homo sapien even evolved that devi meenakshi spearheaded this evolution into homo sapien into the next level kind of human being bringing together all of the different tribes in compassion and love and ceasing to exist in this isolated manner was one of the best things that happened to humanity and even science recognizes that evolution of humanity of human sciences all recognize that one of the most and greatest achievements of human kind of the homo genus an animal is starting to come together as a group starting to live together in large kingdoms and we of course already recognized that and already recorded that in our life history what most modern day scientists don't see is that what they are recognizing as new discoveries in the area of hinduism in the area of science and technology is actually not new in the definition that they believe our ancient rishis had recognized discovered all of what they have now discovered after so many years but did not see and did not appreciate in the hindu culture going back to what i was saying before devi meenakshi was the first person first ruler of humanity who had brought together all of the isolated tribes and built the nation the immense nation that spanned across modern day pakistan until cambodia she was one of the first in a series of rulers who ruled and made the indian civilization the indus valley civilization so great known throughout the world for all of its riches 
being one of the richest cultures of humanity and the most beautiful culture that existed at the time. Of course, this attracted so many people from around the world, even then, to come and explore into our culture. But at that time, even then, of course, there was people who wanted to exploit the culture and started a huge persecution against the Hindu culture and tradition. Devi Meenakshi was the first matriarch of the Vedic civilization, followed by thousands of matriarchs, rulers, who had established the philosophy and the traditional way of living in Hinduism. Hinduism is as great of a culture today because of how she established it. In all truth, we owe everything that we experience and live today as Hinduism to Devi Meenakshi. And she was the first matriarch of our civilization, known to all Hindus as the mother. This is the culture which we have. This is our tradition. Feminism, women empowerment, matriarchs, and worshipping the divine feminine is just in our regular practice. It's in our, our bones and blood. However, today, the ideas of feminism in the Western world are only based in equality and seeking the rights of women in areas of politics, employment, society. And while there's no denying that that is extremely important, significant and necessary for our, our evol evolution as a humanity, we have to understand that no being is empowered unless they are established in the conscious resource. As Swamiji has been saying, as it been explaining detailedly in many different ways for the past 20 years, consciousness is the ultimate way that we have to establish ourselves and bring out the best in humanity. That is the way Swamiji is spearheading a revolutionary change to humanity and the way we live. Until today, he works continuously in order to bring this superconscious breakthrough to humanity and has throughout even the relentless persecution against him continuously been giving and serving humanity. I invite all the viewers who are gathered with us today and waiting for Swamiji to ask the avatar using the hashtag ask the avatar you can ask any question which you want and have the opportunity of Swamiji himself to answer your questions in today's live satsang when Swamiji comes. As Swamiji says, he never answers the question, he always answers the questioner. Sometimes when we ask a question to Swamiji, it is having different meaning, it is resting in alternative motives. And for some way, we ask that question seeking an answer which we may not even have voiced. But somehow, in some way, the way that Paramashiva himself works and knows, he is able to answer the deep seeking that we have inside of ourselves. 
invite all of the viewers to tweet your question using the hashtag AskTheAvatar. You can mention at Srinath Nityananda, the official, uh, the official tag of Swamiji on Twitter. And you can ask as many questions that you want for them to be established and answered in the live satsang when Swamiji comes today. You can see if you have been tuning in to the last few days in the satsang, you know that it is an absolute treat to be able to get the answer from Swamiji for all of these questions. He is continuously answering our seeking. And as devotees reach out to him, making himself available for them to experience. Just recently, he had invited devotees, answered them personally, and made so much of joy happen in them. We have collected the testimony of, of these questioners of just how answering one question during satsang was such a beautiful treat for all of the people who are watching. Not only that, the way that Swamiji answers the people is the most direct and loving, caring way that a question can be answered. He, like I said, answers the questioner and not the question and fulfills a lifetime's long seeking in the soul in the being that is asking the question. For this opportunity, once again, I invite all of the viewers to tweet your questions at hashtag AskTheAvatar at Sri Nityananda. Now, I would like to introduce another main topic, significant topic for this prelude to satsang today. As so many people are seeing on the media, on many different types of social media, the amount of poison which is being spread against Swamiji and his disciples. Now I would like to invite Ma Tattvapriya and Nityanandita to answer to the media which is going on continuously hurting Swamiji and ultimately hurting the entire Hinduism and working towards its destruction. Stay tuned as they will answer some of the questions which you have about this persecution against Swamiji and against Hinduism in its entirety. Thank you.
నిత్యానందం త్యాగ లవ్ అండ్ నాన్ వైలెన్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద త్రీ థింగ్స్ ద ఫౌండేషన్ ఆన్ విచ్ స్వామీజీ హ్యాస్ బిల్డ్ ది ఎంటైర్ సంగ the revival of the only hindu nation shri kailasa the foundation if we can just see last 20 years of swami ji's life all we can see is just different 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 dimensions of tyaga his uncompromising love and his non violence in spite of relentless attacks assassination attempts lawfare media hate speech character demonization rapes and murders of his disciples destruction of his religious institutions monasteries it's easy to talk about non violence but it's difficult when you are being persistently attacked atrociously for absolutely no reason at that time from that space of non violence operating from that space of tyaga and uncompromising love towards his disciples and his will persistence to make his mission happen that is swamiji that is how this entire sangha shri kailasa has been built today we are going to see and hear about what's been happening with the monk sisters recently their mother bhuvaneshwari has come out to the media and allegedly making false claims spreading rumors about the two monk sisters and what were they have been sharing so far just to give you a quick preview janardan and his wife bhuvaneshwari enrolled their four children in gurukul 6 years back gurukul was is a free residential school offering the vedagamic education and the education of today through different syllabuses we have igcse syllabus and different syllabuses in gurukul three years later janardan and his uh, wife decided to come and join the monastery full time janardan so called resigned his job and came and joined the adinam and over the last three years he was involved in multiple financial embezzlements we are um, having proofs evidences of bhuneshwari directly mixing poison in swami ji's food both of them have been found to have been directly involved with the spearheading the anti hindu anti spiritual elements attack on swami ji and sangha last november janardan decides to once his financial embezzlement surfaced out and he realized he could not cheat anymore he absconds from the organization comes and wants to m- remove all his four children from gurukul the younger two children went with him the elder two girls who were majors at that time decide to not give in to the father's corruption and his lack of integrity and decide to stay with swami ji and sangha and decide to continue their monastic lifestyle this decision leads to janardan filing an fir saying that his daughters have been kidnapped and this fir led to the arrest of two of our female monks ma prana priya and ma priya tatwa who were kept in jail for 82 days and were later released on bail and this also led to the harassment of the gurukul balasans by the so called child welfare committee authorities and janardan by the instigation of janardan and now his wife bhuvaneshwari has come out in the media saying that the daughters are um you know talking about their father in a wrong way so what is the truth behind this whole thing and why suddenly bhuvaneshwari is coming out in the open when she herself has been involved 
indirect assassination attempts on Swamiji. So let's hear the truth from the two monk sisters who are joining us today to share the truth and to unravel the mystery behind the conspiracy spearheaded by their once father and mother, Janardhan and Bhuvaneshwar. Nityananda Ma. First, we want to offer our gratitude to Swamiji and Sangha for being with us, for giving us this opportunity literally every day where we are able to come and voice out the justice, the truth of what is exactly happening. Media is so busy in spreading all sorts of hate speeches, absurd lies and just spreading hatred defamation and trying to twist our case trying to bring in justice for us and I really want to thank all the viewers who are continuously supporting many people who are continuously expressing your support by tweeting, by commenting by messaging us like this in many ways you all have shown your support and I really want to thank all of you for that. Yesterday, there was a fake news by this prostitute channel, Republic TV, which I am so hurt by the way the Republic TV has tortured both of our lives. That I am even using this word. Actually, there are so many media channels that are just prostitutes. And I would like to in include Republic TV also in that because the way it has tortured us. Every time spreading some false rumor as a news. And every time it has been really, really hard on our lives. Really hard on the life of Swamiji. Someone who is doing so much to Sanatana Hindu Dharma, so much to humanity at large, is being persecuted continuously. I only want to address the recent video that was published by Republic TV, the video of Bhuvaneshri, our Purvashram mother where she comes and pretends with a lot of theatrics claiming all sorts of lies telling how actually there's nothing even she's sharing there all she's doing is cursing all she's doing is just abusing us and that video, the transcript of that video was published in Republic TV. And this news, so many people started sending to me with a lot of concern. And that is why I want to address this today. I really thank all of you for your patience and coming and giving us this time and listening to us. First, I just wanted to give a brief intro on who is this lady. She has we, I have to say, like when she actually put us in Nityananda Gurukul, that time because 
the first time when she met Swamiji, she actually held her Mangalyam, Mangal Sutra, what we call as Thali in Tamil, the Tirumangalyam. She held that, came to Swamiji and begged for her husband's life, Skulnari's life. He was in a serious condition in hospital where his third heart surgery was going on. The doctors had almost given up. Swamiji blessed her and that is why that Kulnari is even alive today. After being like seeing that her husband's life was saved, she started getting connected and like started doing like coming to ashram. But after she came to ashram, she she never joined as an Adinavasi. We joined the Nityananda Gurukul in the year 2013. But she had not joined the Adinam then. In 2016, when she got money to poison Swamiji, that is when she enters the Adinam and pressurizes to be in Swamiji's kitchen. You all would have heard Swamiji multiple times telling that he is not able to talk and like he coughs a lot something is wrong with his health and that anti-hindu elements have injected poison inside swamiji many people many there are multiple people who are involved in this but that the one that i have seen as an eyewitness was this lady bhuvaneshwari who's abusive video is now like widely spreading and she poisoned Swamiji and when I found out that she is poisoned Swamiji it was a slow poison with high actually toxic levels of lead so you keep putting it in the food every day within two months the organs will start uh, dysfunctioning it will just start actually malfunctioning and the person will die within three four months so that was a poison that she started feeding Swamiji. But she started mixing in Swamiji's food and giving it to him. And all of you should, I also wanted to share with all of you. It is not a joke what we are going through, what we are being put through by our, what when people go to their parents, when people live with their parents, especially in a culture like India, where family is given utmost priority. In India, we look up, we are out to look out, look up at our parents to learn ethics, to see how we have to treat others with respect, to learn how to treat women with dignity. That is a reason that India has always grown with its popularity about the culture because we give so much of importance and respect, mutual respect in the family. But unfortunately for us, that is not the truth that is not what we are and why we are running away is not because just because of that we literally are being brought up by someone who is an assassin who's a murderer someone who's a cheap womanizer all of you should know as an 18 year old girl what amount of torture it would have taken me what amount of pain it would have taken me that is caused by my own, whom I am supposed to call as parents, by the Kulnari and by Bhuneshwari, that it takes me to tell this. All of you should know, when many of your relatives, when many of you at your 18 would have dreamt what you should do next, what is a career you have to choose. And many of you would have dreamt that this is what you need to do and had a clarity in life and by now might as well have even started it there are many people who are achieving but here what I want fortunately I was able to get as a gift Swamiji happened in my life just at the age of 13 but today this is not what I dreamt of I have been running here and there, almost like a refugee because I don't have any place to live. There's nobody. 
and whatever we talk being manipulated in the media being misinterpreted mispresented if you as a woman as a child just at 18 are put through this what would you do i am being asked to file a false rape charge against the person who has brought me who is my father and mother swami ji who is my master who is everything i have seen him save my father my very own father's life as a 12 year old girl as a 13 year old girl i saw how whom the man i thought was my father was saved by swami ji and today that very man that kulnari calls me and tells me to file a false rape charge against swami ji that first of all for it is never easy even to utter the word rape charge all of it, it takes me so much of pain that is not what i am brought up that's not the ambience in which i am brought up actually only when all these things started we even started learning many of these things many of these words it's so painful that right now where being like the prime time of our life where we are supposed to focus on our ambitions career what we want to do it is so hurting that we are in a position today where we are supposed to come like this and talk to you all just because we are being tortured by the kulnari and his wife i wanted to ask all of you it is how it feels for you when someone who has like done so much to you and your family and in front of you the people whom you were just putting all your belief and trust on swami ji cuted by such cheapsters how would you feel all of you need to understand that every time it was swami ji who was the target the person who has sacrificed everything and is selflessly serving the humanity the person who has left everything his whole life in spite of being harassed being being abused being persecuted being dragged into jail for no crime without a single victim he was charged of they falsely all of these persecution swam ji put up it takes lot of pain to see what swam ji is going through and to be used as a weapon against swam ji itself every time swam ji was tortured he was abused every time munta in puttire nija mariya sodarare ariya valdane yedrigala irare
to keep asking telling oh how are you able to handle all these why are your own parents they have been there in the adinam and why are they all of a sudden doing it i wanted all of you to know i first want you all to understand their character so you all are able to understand what we are sharing with you all i do get it when it's really uncognizable for an indian family especially a hindu family where culture heritage are all rich to be having all these things but this case is different i wanted all of you to understand they do anything for money 2013 to swami ji who saved kulnari is life 2016 that same kulnari and his wife come into the adinam after taking money from the conspirators to poison and assassinate swami ji not just taking money from conspirators stealing money from swami ji Today that Bhuvaneshwari is making a video and doing all of her theatrics and trying to be melodramatic, but all of you should know that woman that is crying and trying to get sympathy out of you all has also been the very same cunning person that stole more than five crore rupees in the name of trying to fulfill or her lo- loans and debts. She took money from Swamiji, more than five crore. but till date not a single penny has been written and you all should know she hasn't just used that to settle her loans she stole that money and started hotel started her business and ran away from the adinam there is see one important thing i want all of you to understand is she comes and claims so much about family today but for almost 3 years the day when she left adinam after we found out that she was the one who was poisoning swami ji she left the adinam after that she hasn't even bothered about her family she was living with some other person half her age she was living with another man understand after having four children the age where she is expected to tell us oh please focus on your lives don't uh, go into relationships don't have boyfriends she didn't do that to us instead it was the other way around we were telling her not to do what she is doing we were telling her to come and stay uh, stay with us as a whole family today what makes her come and talk so much about family i really have this question how much did she take from that kulnari or any other conspirator to make even this video and how come it took so many months to make a video if this was something she has been talking from beginning she should have made a video she had her social media active with her you all need to know that she was not there in the home she ran away even after this problem started twice despite of like all this persecution starting two to three times she ran away from the house and that was a period where the school nurse was keeping quiet and it's actually like when i'm telling all these things it doesn't feel nice it, it it's really like hurting when it it's like someone you trust so much just deceives you and not just that what you believe as something most precious in your life that is just been taken away 
forcefully from you today you all can see we are neither being able to be with sangha nor are we be are we able to even come back to our home country how long is this going to continue most importantly it really pains to see that they are using us as a weapon again energy there is a question that people are asking it is so hard to take strong stance can you answer to the people who are claiming that you are not taking the stance by yourself and being told and even threatened by swamiji to say what you are saying first i wanted all of you to understand it's a very painful thing that we have not been able to be in communication with the sangha all we do is we know we had to come at this time so we get an opportunity to come and be in the nithyan and the tv that's all we are not able to be contact the sangha and swamiji no way and why first if you all just analyze this question logically why is swamiji going to tell us do this do that what is the use of us for the sangha there's no special thing if you all just see okay if so much case is happening it will all take just few minutes for swamiji to tell okay you guys go he actually told that in the satsang he told you guys go solve your family problem after we have not been in touch with swamiji or sangha or anybody it's all just the satsang few minutes that one hour satsang that we get to watch every day live on nityananda tv and apart from that we know at this time we can come live and share here so we only come live and come here and share and what we have taken this stance is not based on anyone else telling and you all are wrong by telling oh taking strong stance is difficult no this strong stance is our, our will persistence to stand up by dharma and this is what swamiji has taught us this is how gurukul has groomed us to stand up with dharma and this question itself we are doing taking our decisions on our own nobody is teaching us there's no gun that is kept on our heads or and i don't think to tell the truth of what we have been through we need to be forced all of you need to understand we have been having no place and we are running around it can only take insensitive people and violent people to comment on us instead of helping us find the truth or helping us find justice we have been targeted by our own whom we are supposed to call parents but children are supposed to be protected by parents we are running away because they are worst demons you all need to know this persecution that is happening to swamiji this is not the first time time and again this has happened last time adinavasis devotees were physically attacked you all can see in the video how they were all abused targeted and violently attacked the malicious persecution that happened in june 2012 ajit hanuma kanavar interviewed the fake rape victim of paramahamsa nityananda on suvarna tv by june 7th 2012 swamiji refutes her fake claims in a press meet held here in bidhi ajit hanuma kanavar interrupts this press meet with illegal summons which swamiji refused to take this however was projected in the media as if swamiji was absconding repeatedly and this is shown in this way even till now the media failed to show that what ajit did was illegal as he is not a representative of the court he is a media person furthermore the summons ajit was trying to give 
was from the convicted rapist Vinay Bharadwaj in another false case that was dismissed. After Ajit illegally tries to serve a summons, his rowdies come back and attack the ashram and ashramites, severely injuring our administrators. Then his Savarna gang again interrupts the press meet the following day and created a huge scene by assaulting our ashramites, sannyasis and women. When they're being escorted out there, a huge crowd of gundas is seen riding outside the gate. They actually jumped our fence and started attacking us with stones and degraded Swamiji's pictures and effigies. Finally, Ajit puts a false case on Swamiji, accusing him of supposedly inciting an attack on him. This complaint was completely baseless and was dismissed as Swamiji was not even present on the scene. However, the case on Ajit of sexual assault on one of our sannyasins is still open. The media is leveraging its mafia power to go beyond its scope and conspiring with criminals to attack Hindu gurus. Where is the integrity and basic human decency in the Indian media? This, just what we saw, is only a glimpse of the humongous, horrific, malicious attack that Swamiji was put through. Today this lady, who has absolutely no chastity, all of us need to understand, it is chastity that gives power to our words. It is chastity, whether it is a boon or a curse, the words you utter becomes reality. It was only because of Gandhari's chastity she was able to even curse Krishna. It was only because of chastity Savitri was able to command the sun, command Yamadharma. Everybody's words work only if they are chaste. This lady is coming and talking so much absolutely without any chastity. She was a person, neither she's chaste to her husband, nor is she chaste to her guru. And who is she coming and talking like this, abusing us, cursing us? Who is she to curse Swamiji? Each one of you who are watching this, I really request all of you to raise your questions and ask, if, if her real concern is only us, if she really wants that only both of us have to come back to the family and that is all they want, why not give a simple affidavit? Just telling that they are not going to misuse us and make us file a false rape charge on Swamiji? We have been asking this literally every day. Why? How come they're not giving it till date. It is really, really so obvious that it is a complete conspiracy and a fake news. But nobody listens to our side. The whole news is claiming that we, both of us, are kidnapped. And we are continuously telling that no, we are not kidnapped and please listen to our side. No media is interested, listen. They only keep putting all the crap that 
with Kundari and his third rate cheap family is sending. It is really painful that we have to come where I would love to share the teachings of Swamiji here. For the past five months, it's not just not talking. It is so painful. Really, I don't even know how to bring all this out because till date I have I have heard the media trials because I I I have seen how it was done on Swamiji, but today. Going through it, I'm understanding so many other impacts, so many other implications it has personally on our lives. It is not just ordinary trolls or nothing like that. Completely mispresenting our very existence and context, where she makes a video trying to protect her life from the very media and uh, press channels that were trying to attack. and they change and manipulate and present the news this media is one of the worst persecution that can happen to anybody's life today what how republic tv is doing and how so many other news media channels are doing it is not just us even to swamiji this was the very very same weapon that was used to assassinate his character to ridicule him to tell truth all all the lies to hide the truth all of you should know swamiji who tried to tell the truth was completely manipulated there were trespassers trying to illegally jump in and attack swamiji there were assassination attempts as if eggs were thrown on swamiji a worst inhumane torture i'll just show you all one example how one cheap prostitute headed by none other than danya rajendran how she manipulated and mispresented and when they manipulate and mispresent for their cheap trp they do it publicly but after that they try to settle down all the issues without public knowing all of you can see the video for yourselves danya rajendran an anti national journalist a paid media prostitute woman who is always misguiding people by giving false news about the avatar paramhansa sri nityananda swami ji This attention seeking lady job is always bad commenting about Swami ji for more views of her page joining with anti national elements if she works in the social media or posting some useless gossip about Swami ji in her media to interest tr pivot this media come mind who continuously paid for spreading lies about shinita and swami ji She is a paid media person who is always giving news twist to people about Swami ji with her vested interest. When we are facing such crucial persecution on 2010, this lady never left us. Got us the slot extra interview from Swami ji in Haridwar. In front of us, she took interview introduced to Swami ji by saying, "Swami ji is very much in Haridwar attending Kumbh Mela and speaking to Times Now." Media reports from two South Indian states, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, claim that Swami ji Paramahamsa Nityananda is missing, but the Swami ji is very much in Haridwar. who are attending the kumbh mela and speaking to times now and this prostitutes started the news within their channel claiming times now managed to track down swami ji nityananda in haridwar see times now managed to track down swami nityananda in haridwar and this paid media anchor first imposed swami ji with the introduction as The man admits he is indeed in the sleaze video, which is utter lie. The man admits he is indeed in that sleaze video, but that some parts of it have been morphed. Speak the impost subtitle with the interview is it's me in the video. Just knowing the psychology of the people to watch the interview with the judgment, not with the open mind. 
This we can call as possessing people by imposed judgment about others and making money out of it. Here is the original video. While watching this video, the viewer who want to know the fact will not come to the conclusion Swamiji is saying that he is in that video. Swamiji is giving a simple straightforward answer uh, that Swamiji does not have any judgment of that video. And he clearly says that Swamiji has sent the video for research. Swamiji, what created the entire video? What did you want to do? Few things I want to talk about it. Uh, surely there is a lot of misrepresentation, manipulation, conspiracy and marking. Now only we are working which parties recorded during uh, with conspired way in a conspired way which parties marked which parties misrepresented which is manipulated all these things we are studying before we i come to the complete conclusion i do not want to make any big comment but apart from this i can say many things about the whole thing about the situation about the whole uh, atmosphere first thing my uh, personal life was completely misrepresented and misinterpreted and intrusion of privacy intrusion of privacy some of the uh, magazines and media are publishing the photograph of me changing clothes after taking bath and what it has to do with see some videos they are publishing to uh, defame my character some videos they are publishing uh, just changing clothes i don't know how much is uh, marked in this and how much is uh, now only we have sent some whatever we got we have sent it to some of the people who are doing research we are working on it before that i i wanted to be very uh, patient before making any comment and swami ji never said in the interview that he was in trance when the video was shot first of all swami ji never spoke about the video shot all he was saying is consciously he was in deep samadhi and physically he was not feeling well and this prostitute dania twist his words as trance in the middle of the interview so were you sick in december 2000 yes yes, yes. i was sick for many days uh, one consciously i was in a very deep samadhi and physically i was not feeling well After asking series of questions to Swami ji it's Daniel Rajendran the prostitute twisted the word from samadhi to trance by asking a question with the statement going back to the December 2009 incident you had said that you were in trance that time going back to the uh, the December 2009 incident you had said uh, that uh, you were in a trance at that time mm-hmm. so do you think some of the things could have been misinterpreted or you are not even in your senses when it happened is that what you're trying to say just because swami ji did not commented about the details of a question which is not so important at that point of time they twisted swami ji word from samadhi to trance first of all in any straight forward video the anchor description the visual and the scroll contents has to be same the scrolls are used to show the essence of the video for the viewer to decide for watching the video or not the anchor is there to give the brief of that video and finally the video is shared for the viewer to know the truth but in case of swami ji interview the anchor description scrolls and the visuals are completely different swami ji visuals are used just to show the availability of him in that interview the scrolls are used for people to imbibe media imposed judgment of swami ji in the visual the anchor is leading swami ji interview according to the trp rate of the channel they are repeating the same interview again and again for people not to divert from the imposed context and stick to their lies om nityananda paramashivo शिवोहम ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवोहम ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवोहम ओ नित्यानंद परम शिवो Shiva
tapes of Swami Nityanand. He is sitting in his prison cell before he is removed in fact and brought to the interrogation chamber. But there he seems to be more relaxed. Well, yes, the visuals that we are running, Rahul, is from the first day when Nityanand was brought to Bangalore. In fact, that's a CCTV footage uh, from the interrogation room where he was kept uh, inside the CID office. Now, very strangely, that day, Rahul, the audio did not get recorded and uh, the entire proceedings had to be repeated by the CID once again the next day. Now, what sources in the CID office tell us is that Nityanand was a very difficult man to interview because mostly he would answer in monosyllable. Swamiji as monosyllable is a word framing from 
धनिया राजेंद्रन दिस इज वन ऑफ अ कुकअप स्टोरी विच इज द इंटरप्रिटेशन फ्रॉम हर मीडिया कम माइंड इन द फर्स्ट इट सेल्फ शी मेन्शन दट दर इज नो ऑडियो ऑफ द सी आई डी and the cid has explained the entire proceedings on the very next day on seeing the cid integration footage anyone cannot tell that swamiji is a monosyllable he is the one who is talking in that entire footage and the body language of him is normal and the interrogators are listening to it here also the visual is different and the anchor is interpreting swamiji by using cid name this is the cunning way the media is spreading lies in front of our own eyes explaining to all of us the truth and ensuring that their voice their story is heard making sure that every single person knows the truth of why this persecution is happening and why we are all facing so much of hardship why swami ji himself is sacrificing so much this in itself explains what is the quality the essence of the truth that swami ji is delivering to the world he knows that no matter what he must deliver the conscious breakthrough the experience of paramashiva to all of us thank you everyone for joining for our panelists and for all of the viewers for listening to our style of the story now we will get ready for the darshan of parama shiva await with the utmost yearning inside of you chanting the mahavakya and sitting in deep silence awaiting the darshan of the
closed is meditation. Connecting with the divine, with your eyes open is darshan. Come, let us all now move from meditation to darshan. Slowly, very slowly, please open your eyes. I'm not a 
अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा I welcome you all with my love and respect. I welcome all the visitors, viewers, devotees, disciples, Saranya Pita Kartas, Ejamans, Sri Mahans, Mahans, Tanidar Kotari, visitors, viewers, Kaya Kalpa Yoga participants. Diksha into power manifestation participants, everyone, all those watching on Kailasa's Nityananda TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Kailasa TV, Hinduism Now, Enlighten App, Twitter, and two-way video conferencing, having Naina Diksha. I welcome all of you with my love and respects. And today, the second day of Rajarajeshwari Brahmotsavam. Rajarajeshwari Nityanandeshwari Parashakti is gracing in Sarva Alankara in Rajata Simha Vahana along with Sri Lakshmi, Sri Saraswati in Adikailasa Nityananda Peetam. Let's receive their blessings now. ओम धूर धूर्वधूर्वतूर्वतमा धूर्वतीूर्वय वैंधूर्वा मत्वंदे वाशस्थित मंपप्रीत मंजुष्टतम वनितमंदे बहूतमृतमतिहविता नंद्रिगंहस्व मास्वा आर्मी सेवा चक्रा प्रेक्षेमा भेर्मा संवीक्षा मत्वा हिपुषम श्री निनंदेश्वरी पराशक्ति राजराजेश्वरी नम धूपमाघ्रापयामी ओम बुद्धीप्य स्वजात वेद पघ्न निरृति मम पशु जात वेदो पघन निरृति मम पशु मह्यमा जीवन चिशो दिशा मानो हिगंसी जात वेदो गाम शंपुरुष जगत अभिभ्रद आगहि श्रिया मा पिपात श्री निनंदेश्वरी पराशक्ति राजराजेश्वरी नम एक दीप संदर्शयामी अमृते अमृतोद्भवे अमृतवर्षिणी अमृत श्रावय श्रावय स्वाहा ओं श्री निनंदेश्वरी पराशक्ति राजराजेश्वरी नम नैवेद्यम निवेदयामी निवेदनाचमन समर्पयामी बहुपैबश्वाय बह्वजा विकाय बहुव्रीहियवाय बहुमाशतिलाय बहुतिरण्याय बहुहस्तिकाय बहुदासपुरषा रईमस्ते पुक्तिमस्ते बहुरायस्पोषाय राजास्तु ओं सर्वस्यामे तेनाति जयती ओं श्री निनंदेश्वरी पराशक्ति राजराजेश्वरी नम सर्वेवदेवी स्वूपाय भगवते श्री निनंद परमशिवाय नम सर्वोपचार पूजा कर्पूर नीराजन संदर्शयामी रक्षा धारयामी
Paramashiva's message today. From Sri Kailasa, directly listen. Every time when Tyaga is cognized and manifested, you raise you to the next level of existence. Understand? I'll tell you some of the stories, training I had with my own gurus. Usually, the biggest question I face from disciples, devotees, Swamiji, I don't feel like doing Tyaga, what should I do? Understand? Mind will never ever support you taking the decision of Tyaga. Because it's like a... How will the mind give up its right over you? You see, mind exists with a tremendous confusion and by keeping you powerless. It derives its life by keeping you powerless. How will mind help you to do Tyaga? Tyaga is like a fire. Mind is like a fungus. Thrives in the dark, dirty water. It thrives in the dark, dirty water stand, stagnant in one corner. How will the mind Allow the existence of Tyaga in you. No. It will try its best to stop you. Understand one thing. If you eat radish, you will belch radish smell. If you eat all confusion, powerlessness, this kind of thoughts, naturally you will belch powerlessness, fear, insecurity. No, no, I may try to do Tyaga now, but after one year I may collapse. Fool! Are you fool? More and more Tyaga, you will only raise to next, next level in your conscious existence. People try to tell me, Oh, even if I think of sannyas now, after two years I may fail. Actually, failures happen only in marriage. In sannyas, there is no failure. Sannyas is like having all your wealth in your bank, in your reserve, in the hand. You can spend any time. A sannyasi can marry any time he wants. He's a single. But a grigastha cannot become sannyasi any time he wants. <laughs> grigastha or a married person is a life spent already. You should feel more secure with sannyas, not with grigastha life. Here you have more freedom, more opportunity, more possibility. Your things are more open to you. I am not encouraging sannyas is getting married. Please be understand. Please understand what I am saying. I want all of you to know your delusion and the absolute worst delusion is you expecting your deluded mind to support you in Tyaga. No! It will not. Your body is filled with toxins. Mind is absolutely confidenceless. Full of fears and powerlessness. How do you expect your mind to inspire you for Tyaga. No! Only the conscious, ferocious decision can make you powerless. Sorry, can make you get out of powerless. Powerlessness. Can make you free from powerlessness. Understand? I tell you.
I'll tell you what is Tyaga. It's, a, it's like a, you got into an accident, vehicle crashed, you, have, you are almost gone other than one single breath to somehow push your body out and get out of the vehicle. That moment how you will push yourself and get out of the vehicle, that is what is declaration of Tyaga. Collecting your whole energy and pushing you. Come on. I am declaring Tyaga of this old, old mind and identity. The whole thing. thing. Understand? I tell you, that is the way Tyaga functions. That is the way Tyaga works out. Tyaga will never happen by your mind getting convinced and supporting you. It's not like a vacation you are planning where everything will be in your favor and you say, Oh, oh ha, ju, jil. No! Tyaga is breakthrough in your consciousness. I tell you, all the best moments In my life was decisions made in utter tyaga. Never go back to what you vomited. Never go back to secured, cozy, supporting ambience. Renounce higher and higher. The moment you go higher, renounce that also. When you go next level, renounce that also, but never come down. I have seen how the Tyaga works. When I left the house, to build one ashram, before even I completed that one ashram, see, I left the house, to build one ashram in Tirchangodu. Before even I completed that one ashram, I left Tirchangodu to build a huge Sangha to Bangalore. Before even I renounce, before even I completed the building of the big Sangha organization, I renounced that too to build this Kailasa nation. But nothing has left me. I have not renounced anything end of the day. See that still the first ashram is getting constructed, getting completed. Second one is evolving in a full-fledged way. The third one is already happened. In Tyaga, you change the whole space inside. I tell you, I am giving you small examples. In Tyaga, you don't lose anything. You only lose one thing, the powerless mental setup. The powerless mental setup you carry, you lose that, you break that. Do not expect your mind to get convinced about Tyaga and you doing Tyaga. No, if your mind is convinced, then it is a cunningness. It's a trap. You just decide, hey, I heard about Paramashiva. I don't have a complete route to become Paramashiva, but I am deciding. Whatever with little known, I am going to fly towards Paramashiva.
the power to take absolute risk is tyaga power to take absolute risk consciously ferociously and then stick to it no question of turning back no question of turning back every time when people are deluded the only question they raise swami ji somehow i am not having that confidence decision i should do tyaga only then you should do tyaga you are now sick deluded breaking the old identities fears throwing away all the so called securities plan b's backups is tyaga that is tyaga tyaga gives absolute fresh life it breathes fresh life into you it actually breathes fresh situations lives understandings fresh energy if you eat radish you will belch radish if you are filled with the delusion confusing complication incompletion powerless thoughts how do you expect your inner space will automatically manifest tyaga no tyaga is conscious decision tyaga is always momentary decision after the decision you stand by it then you just experience higher existence higher consciousness whether in your health i tell you if you have tasted the tyaga in utter insecurity like you walked out of some very worst suffocating situations and did not go back you only went forward went ahead 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 if you have tasted that kind of a tyaga you will even walk out of cancer because once you taste tyaga it becomes your bio memory that is why i say a sanyasi will never have cancer because he can just walk out of cancer person who has taste, tasted pure sanyas i have walked out of multiple suffocating situations in my life never turned back looked back even thought about looking back i tell you tasting sanyas tasting unclutching tasting tyaga is all one and the same in tamil once 
அருணகிரி ஈஸ்வரா டோல்மி நாய் தாம்பா வாந்தி எடுத்ததை வாரி திங்கும் நாம பண்ணப்படாது ஒன்லி டாக்ஸ் ஈட் வாட் தி வாமிட்டட் நாட் ஹியூமன் பீயிங்ஸ் ஸோ ஒன்ஸ் யூ ரெனவுன்ஸ் டூ தியாக அன் மூவ் மூவ் அஹெட் கோ அஹெட் மார்ச் அஹெட் நேவர் லுக்கிங் பேக் நேவர் கோயிங் பேக் நேவர் getting into the cosy secured backup plan b I tell you, Tiaga infuses very life. In you. Today, I'll initiate all of you into this powerfulness of tyaga as energy consciousness after a break let's get ready for this initiation process after a break
Nityanandam, just beautifully Swamiji shares how Pyaga gives powerful and powerfulness in us. How by doing Pyaga we actually become wealthy. How we do not lose anything. Such beautiful, powerful cognitions that Swamiji is giving us every day. As we are celebrating the Raja Rajeshwari Brahmotsavam and the Vijayotsavam Brahmotsavam and both combined together on March 2nd, celebrating the Anti-Spiritual Elements Suicide Day and the Raja Rajeshwari Brahmotsu. On this special day, we are offering Chandi Homa, a special Chandi Homa to remove, to destroy all negativity and for a glorious victory. On this very special day, to celebrate this occasion, the whole Nityananda Sangha around the world want to share their joy, their gratitude and their love to Swamiji. Why do they follow Swamiji? There is a beautiful campaign going on. Why I follow Nityananda? This campaign is so dear to many. It is very close to their hearts because all they have to do is just share their experience why they follow Swamiji. And people around the world are sharing their experience in their own language. Actually, there are a few devotees who have who say it is not enough for them. If one video is not enough where they can share their experience. So they have committed to make 108 videos each. It is just so joyful to hear their love for Swamiji, their devotion for Swamiji and their gratitude. We also have today Mamaitreyi Solai from Massachusetts, USA, who is actually leading this campaign and enriching their devotees and inspiring in, um, in recording and uh, getting the even the shy devotees who are shy in front of camera to share their experience and gratitude as to why they follow Swamiji. So we have today Mamaitreyi who would like to come and share about her experience of meeting Swamiji as well as as to why she is leading this campaign as we wait for her. Just want to share how Swamiji has made a difference in so many people's lives. In um, Actually, Ma Maitri is ready and available now. Ma, Nityananda Ma. Nityananda Ma. Thank you for leading this wonderful campaign. Could you please share your experience as to why this project, this project especially is dear to your heart? Yes, Ma. Yes, this is extremely dear to my heart and I'm very passionate about this campaign because I was one of those people on the other side Right, like you know, I was born in Tamil Nadu and I followed the persecution right from the beginning. I came to know about Swamiji only through the persecution, only through the mock video. And um, you know, I've been on the other side and I have um, not known anything about Swamiji except for what the media portrayed. So, uh, when my husband told me a couple years ago that he was going to uh, uh, attend Swamiji's program, Mahasadash Boham, I was a little surprised, in fact, taken aback. What will I tell the world? The world is going to mock at us. You know, like, why this controversial guru? There are so many gurus out there. Let's just, you know, like, find some guru that's less controversial, was my first thought. But then, you know, my husband insisted. He said he had done his research and he found Swamiji to be very genuine, very authentic, and... He did attend the program and I saw him transform. So I was very curious about who Swamiji was. And I started attending um, his satsangs. I watched his satsangs and um, he did make sense. Some of them uh, were like some of the things he said was like, uh, you know, a little, uh, I, I couldn't understand it completely, but many things did make sense. 
so then i started watching the abuse of material and then i found that it was very nonsensical what the media was saying and it was far away from the truth and then i attended parameshwaram in 2018 so um i had such wonderful spiritually ecstatic experience and it completely transformed my life too he made hinduism a very palatable user friendly experiential thing for me earlier it just used to be a concept i was one of those people who took pride in saying hey i am spiritual but i'm not religious i thought it just made me look very broad minded because i was not confined to a particular religion but then he made me realize that hinduism is not an identity but an experience it is a lifestyle that we live so it was very strongly experiential it just changed my life and it was something that i could practice in my not just practice i could live in my everyday life so that was something that was very very dear to me that it just changed me as a person so you know this is something that uh, i have done my uh, fair share of guru shopping i have done pranayamas i have done meditations like med- meditation camps and so many things um for stress free living right but swami ji was the first guru and he is the ultimate guru and my search has ended there he showed me that you know like all these things are just tools but enlightenment is the instant powerful cognition we have right it is very instant it does not need many many years to achieve so that's something very dear to me uh, and uh, i want this experience to be felt by everyone in the world and since the public is not aware of you know how awesome my guru is i want to take it out to the world that's why this uh, campaign is like very dear to me and i want um, our um, you know like uh, sangha to participate in this campaign and tell the whole world shout out to the whole world how awesome our guru is the social media and internet is filled with abusive videos troll videos things taken out of context okay so they have like you know they take like a 30 second video from a uh, swami ji's 2 hour satsang and they just project him out, out of context so i want to show them that hey that's totally not true swami ji is very genuine very authentic and he is the super cool guru for the modern mind he knows how a modern mind is confused how it is depressed and all the things it goes through all the ups and downs and he gives very practical solutions to all of them and he also gives the eternal solutions from sanatana hindu dharma by quoting the scriptures it's not something out of the blue that that's something that he you know cooks up he gives the solutions which are eternal so that is why this campaign is very dear to me and i'm very passionate about it thank you ma'am thanks for sharing actually we could list a million reasons for how swami ji has contributed in our life and how he has made a difference let me let's just start writing down there are probably a million things that we could list one of the most powerful difference that swami ji has made in my life is i always used to expect conducive surroundings environment things to be in my favor like so that i can be successful if such and such things are around me then i can be successful if i do not uh, if i am not successful it's because this did not work out or that the person did not like coming up with reasons and saying okay this was not conducive for me that is why i failed or that is why i lost interest and all that kind of reasons so i mean literally broke that in me by showing in spite of all this continuous persecution attacks and hate speech and what not he is not giving up he is clear on his purpose his vision what his vision for humanity is that just makes our silly problems just disappear and like you know irrelevant for life so that one thing that one of the million things but most important in my life i feel like the best thing that has made a difference in my life is it doesn't matter whether the environment suits you or not you make it suitable or you don't even bother you just keep going how swami ji just 
makes us successful in our life having a powerful cognition no matter what happens you just win because you decide to and that is one of the things that um, i really feel uh, you know in my life that uh, swami ji uh, uh, has helped me in, in you know uh, in uh, making a difference in my life in, and of course there is like a million other things that which i could go on list so how is this campaign going on so far and how is the response all by uh it is going uh awesome actually i'm so inspired by uh, the enthusiasm of sangha from all over the world uh say like you know like uh in europe we have uh, ma atmadaya ashramaya and uh, bakula uh all three of them have pledged to make 108 videos because they could not make just one video they have 108 reasons you know to celebrate swami ji to offer the love and gratitude to swami ji and just the three of them are making more interesting videos um and you know like we have the entire europe sangha they are they are like you know having zoom sessions and they are doing uh these videos together and we have the chinese sangha you know they are like meeting up every day they are making videos they have pledged like uh, a 1000 videos uh, in the next two days and then we have tamil nadu sangha uh they have pledged a 1000 videos too and there is a lot of buzz and excitement about this from all over the world and in north america also like we have a lot of people meeting up at temples and they are like doing the videos there so yeah things are very exciting and like i am just uh very inspired by the enthusiasm of sangha wonderful ma thank you for joining and i just wanted to share all other beautiful uh events that are happening one as we shared as we are celebrating the radha rajeshwari mahotsav is the special chandi homa happening on march 2nd uh, celebrating the divine mother as chandika devi to remove the negativity whether it's inside or outside just destroy them completely and for a glorious victory and powerfulness we are offering the chandi homa on march 2nd of course in adi kailash um every day every single day chandi homa is performed and this special day we are offering for this very special purpose of celebrating the anti spiritual elements suicide day and on march 3rd is the jeevan mukti day celebrating by worshiping the living in light and book and of course there is a separate um uh, campaign that is going on which i would be happy to share with you tomorrow with a special guest and also every weekend the diksha into power manifestation program is happening around the world including this weekend there is uh, many centers around the world participating and many devotees have joined and enjoying the diksha the powerful cognitions the diksha by swami ji in awakening the kundalini energy so uh, thank you all and of course for all these programs you can register at nityananda hindu university forward slash daily satsang is where you can um, register for the chandi homa as well as for the diksha into power manifestation program ma would you like to share where people can load upload their videos who want to who is interested in participating in this why i follow nityananda campaign Uh, sure ma so uh, it's tinyurl.com slash y nityananda y as in yes y nityananda wonderful ma thank you it is tinyurl.com letter y nityananda is where you can upload your videos to share your experience of how and why you follow swami ji so thank you all for joining see you back again tomorrow thank you nityananda
yes now i'll answer some of your as the avatar questions sanjay verma is asking nityanandam beloved swami ji is who and how i am being to myself the source of who and how i am being to others could you kindly explain expand on practical implication implementation of non violence towards self thank you very much for this super deep yoga series an ashtabhaira vanyasam process sanjay verma listen you are my own so i will give you the straight answer first listen to this very carefully who and how you are being to yourself is the source and that is exactly the way you behave to with others you are being to others you see you are double edged sword i should say all side you are edged sword the words you use towards others is the exact words you will use towards yourself the words you use towards yourself is the exact words you will use towards others be very 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 clear i'll i'll tell you precisely non violence with others is the way you will learn to be non violent with yourself non violent with yourself is the way you will learn non violent to be with others i tell you once my guru ragupati yogi he told somebody to do fasting that person came back and reported after 36 hours one and a half one and a half days that he is having a gastric problem he said till the gastric the gas formed in the stomach till that gets burnt do fasting and it feels like a medically not right or impossible and all that but i saw that person within 4 5 days it was actually like a juice fasting only juice and no solid food in 4 5 days i saw that person stomach became clean the gastric problem got healed and that very pattern of developing gas if you don't eat is broken is free liberated i tell you digest when the violence erupts out inside you about you or others by tyaga renouncing it in few days you will see that violence towards you and others that very core source pattern will be broken you will break it that power of tyaga will make you experience non violence power of tyaga will make you experience non violence understand sanjay verma you are my really beloved person who my love who is just part of me direct answer i am giving you direct solution from today be ferocious and do tyaga of all your violence within you towards you towards others i'll give you billion dollar listen listen to this word i'll 
shower you with billion dollar i'll give you such big such big breakthrough your business and career will have such big breakthrough i'll shower you with billion dollar just decide you will not cherish violence within you with you and with others i tell you listen carefully sanjay verma this is specifically for you when people attack me and the sangha they cause lot of damage they actually steal money many fellows who are attacking now they have stolen cheated sangha stolen lot of money stolen things many things but i tell you that is not at all shaking me i do not cherish powerlessness anger violence within me or within towards them i neither cherish anger violence towards me nor cherish towards them i only decide one thing clearly i will continue to do tyaga and i will go on be honest and integrated and contribute whatever i can to the world and i tell you because of that continuously i am having breakthroughs next 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 parameshwara is manifesting i tell you first time when i was attacked and that small ashram given to me from by my gurus when that was snatched away from me if i got agitated angry violent reacted my whole life would have gone just in that rut you would not have even heard my name either i would have been successful in, in that war and got that ashram back or i would have lost it in both the ways i would not have crashed beyond that ashram it's a small half an acre property in trivannamalai but lot of sacred sentiment because my gurus gave me anyhow whatever it is if i got into the violent fight which they expected i will get in see they really expected i will get into the fight with them then either they will push me to do legal fight if i have entered a legal fight it will take 50 years in india to get any civil case solved so 50 years it will be in the hang and 50 years i have to be sitting there possession <laughs> only then the 50th year end i will get <laughs> legally ordered that property belongs to me or if i enter into some agitated reactionary assumptions based action illegal fight then either they will be in jail or i will be in jail some but the whole thing would have been a mess so understand if i got into the rut the trap they laid either way i would have been the loser even if i win the property after 50 years what is the use my whole life would have gone stuck with them and doing that whole legal rut and holding the position instead i decided what is intelligence here tyaga i am neither going to have violence within me nor going to cherish violence towards them i am not going to decide anything with that feeling i am cheated exploited let me contribute what i need to contribute to the world i have two big thing to be shared with the world i moved to bangalore empty handed the whole sangha happened there again they attacked then again i have decided now fighting with them yes i will prove i am innocent and i will win this legal war 
by the time they may kill me because this time it is direct assassination attempts they may kill me even if i stay there you see many people who don't have any respect for any law any order liars outright liars they try to lie if you have not done anything wrong why are you afraid of law why are you are the attack on me is not legal it is assassination attempts they want me to attend the court cases everything so that i will continue to be available within their jurisdiction they will know where i am they can kill me that is what is real motive for them they know if i have to attend this court cases and all that then i have to be in that jurisdiction and they know once they know the jurisdiction they know how to kill eliminate understand the whole attack is about killing eliminating you you don't understand hindus are not safe due to various reasons if i fall into their trap which they laid again i will prove my innocence when after 50 years and by the time they would have killed me so to my photograph they will come and declare oh he is a great innocent man great guru who lived but got attacked and persecuted and got killed what is the use of that i have come to give something great to the world i have to do the work i have to contribute it so i decided no question of violence towards me and towards others i decided to have a tyaga no question of getting trapped by their by them in their trap if i felt angry that so much injustice is done to me that feeling only will stop me from going beyond them see when you feel angry and so much injustice is done to you you will not do tyaga and go to the next level you will stand there fight with them prove that you are right they are wrong and you will take revenge on them that whole rat and you don't understand with whom you are fighting even if you prove your supremacy to them you are in their same level of consciousness you are in their level of dimension why do you want to want to destroy your life in their conscious level nityarmani listen it's for you even if you win in the rat race you are a rat why do you want to be a rat understand whether rat race or bull fight rat fight even if you win see you always want to prove and show you are a winner that stupid ego will continue to keep you in the rat level understand that all fight destroys your life your consciousness your higher possibilities sanjay verma when you are starting your career when you are living manifesting your great contribution i know velopathy is going to be the greatest contribution you will give it to the world in the initial level you will feel some people will cheat you some will snatch what is your right and they will run away they may try to take some legal illegal stupid fights don't feel injustice is done to you don't get into the rut of fighting with them to prove your ego or identity just go on doing tyaga be non violent towards yourself and others move next 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 level and infuse your whole energy and intelligence towards contributing what you need to contribute i'll give you billion dollar listen to this advice i'll shower you with billion dollar sanjay verma this is not only my solution for you this is my boon for you see for 
public when they come and ask me i give them solution for my disciples i give solution and boon sanjay verma i am giving you solution and boon and one more thing you are mine i can tell you directly this houston the swarna darshana bhairava homa is going to be a big breakthrough participate in that homa and receive that trinetra that golden gold coated silver bilva leaf energize with the tyaga every night apply jnananjana on your third eye and stick that on your third eye just keep that eat every night i will come in your dream mahabhairava swarnadarshana bhairava will come in your inner space and guide you continuously you are my disciple i can tell you the whole truth as it is vaishali and sanjay both of you participate in that houston swarna krishna bhairava homa and receive that golden silva silver bilva leaf trinetra i energized every night apply jnananjana on your third eye and just stick that literally mahabhairava paramashiva me will enter into your space and guide you continuously it's too big power so sanjay verma essence of the answer i given i'll tell you repeat i'll repeat listen even when you strongly feel you are cheated don't react even when you feel strongly injustice is done to you don't abuse don't react don't have anger within you don't have anger with others if you enter into fight if you enter into the trap of war violence taking revenge proving yourself gone even if you win your life has gone your inner space has gone you will be in their level space understand if i started my fight when i felt injustice is done to me in 2000 with one small local gang i will be still fighting with them trying to prove my identity to them trying to prove i am a big guy to them which will be absolute waste of my life now they know i am too big guy and i wanted to tell you guys the good news they themselves came and surrendered the property <laughs> they came and voluntarily surrendered the property saying that uh, this place is too sacred and it should be celebrated by swami ji and swami ji's presence please tell swami ji to take this and keep it with him and we don't want to any more uh, involve into this small silly thing and you understand it really happened now none of them are there the people who threw me out they are not there and our puja is going on regularly our disciples are doing the puja and everything is in our hand now i got that property also back and i did what i need to do to the world because of my non violence i tell you in every level do not engage in war or fight do not get distracted destroyed consciously sanjay verma this is for you and nityaramani this is for you and sona kamat this is not for you sona kamat for your situation the solution is different i'll tell about that later to you directly <laughs> this answer applies to sanjay and nityaramani so be very clear there is a saying people try to tell oh my enemy decides what weapon i should pick up it's like oh if he argues i will also argue 
if he legally fights i will legally fight if he picks up some other weapon i will pick up that same weapon i tell you that is absolute foolishness you will be in his conscious level you will never have a breakthrough just go beyond do tyaga and become non violent you will set a different standard for yourself if i was fighting with the people who threw me out of tirunelveli i would have been stuck with them or if i was fighting with the people who were chasing me from tirchangod i'll be stuck with them or if i was waging the war with people who were trying to assassinate me in bangalore that gang i'll be wasting my life even if i survive i will not be able to do what i need to do you see this assassination attempts literally make you crippled you can't come out you can't teach you can't speak you cannot tell the real truth which you need to spread see i need to tell all the truths of hinduism and initiate people make people manifest powers this assassination attempts continuously keeps all of us in fear that i can't do my work even if i survive even if i am alive without doing the work what is the use that is why i decided i am not going to engage with them or trying to prove my supremacy to them i decided i have to do my work that is my first priority doing work whether i live or die i don't care by not doing work whether i live or die it is useless so i decided i'll find the right space and place to do my work and i'll do my work and i am successful paramashiva's blessings mahabairava's blessings mahabairava's protection i won the game so i tell you when you do tyaga you are protected by kala bhairava i can see very clearly how not only that when i did tyaga i am seeing so many of my sanyasis and disciples raising the standard of tyaga all of them are also raising in the standard of tyaga they are all just raising themselves hey yes this is the secret of success this is the secret of success and i tell you tyaga dropping violence unclutching paramashanta swarupa completion living non violence implementation of non violence all these are one and the same it is just exploding in you as a strong nuclear force living as a pure power ferocious not letting any stinking fungus settle down inside your space eh hey, just see so much of lies false attacks injustices they are doing to me but i am not wasting my time in retaliating trying to establish my supremacy on them over them or trying to prove hey, i am the winner hey if a rat and lion have a running race even if the lion wins it is too low for lion to have a rat race with a rat it is too low for 
lion to fight with kulnari even lion should not fight with kulnari can sarabeshwara fight with kulnari why will sarabeshwara fight with kulnari sarabeshwara has lot of important work great work to do he has to contribute to the world so understand when you get engaged with your enemies even if you win you are trapped by them declare supremacy over yourself don't waste time on declaring supremacy on anyone no violence within you and no violence outside you just go on focusing contributing sanjay verma this is the solution start applying and i give you the boon also billion dollar i'll shower you with billion dollar i'm giving this boon in public so naturally i will fulfill i have to fulfill and i will fulfill you will become billionaire just decide for non violence and tyaga that's it and implement exactly as i implemented in my life if you see my life you will see living way of tyaga implementing tyaga in every level yes next question sumalata is asking guru embodied has to be given more importance or guru tatva teachings essence is to be imbibed as the goal of any seeker is to be established in ultimate truth going beyond all identities pranams love and respect swami ji listen sumalata <clears throat> this is the answer for sumalata and for everyone listen teachings guru tatva is only to lead you to the guru embodied vedanta principles great philosophies guru tatvas practice everything is only just to reach you to the embodied guru only embodied guru can give you enlightenment no tatva principle can give you enlightenment directly even an incarnation like me i needed an embodied guru directly parameshwara has to come as arunagiri yogeshwara embodied form <coughs> and has to liberate me understand arunagiri yogeshwara manifesting in my life as embodied form is a great statement given to the world embodied guru is mandatory even for incarnations understand all the teachings essence guru tatva is to inspire you to reach you to the embodied guru once you reach the embodied guru guru gita is the only book where he talks to her about him he talks to her about him parama shiva talks to para shakti about guru understand guru tatva teachings essence imbibing all of it 
all this is great to inspire you to push you to make you reach the embodied guru once you reach the embodied guru once you recognize him once you understand him whole life is simple exactly i'll tell you that essence of teachings i learnt from my guru arunagiri yogeshwara simple word if i have to translate the essence of what i received from arunagiri yogeshwara have simple attachment to the embodied guru simple obedience to embodied guru that's all that simple attachment will become beautifully initial level love then next level love then it will become pure prema bhakti then it will become atma bhakti then it will become oneness and enlightenment simple obedience will start the dialogue then the instructions teachings will be given then solutions will be given then initiation will happen then process will happen then powers will be transmitted then oneness will manifest enlightenment is achieved simple attachment simple obedience that's all all teachings guru tatva essence to be imbibed all this ultimate truth everything is only to connect you to the embodied guru once you have reached the embodied guru after that only one teaching simple attachment simple obedience that's it then simply the transmission happens and you become enlightened it is too simple sumalata this is a direct answer for you and for everyone understand when i love you i give you straight answer what i am talking now is a straight answer i am not bothered about trolls i am not bothered about criticizing people they are going to be trolling and criticizing forever i am not even now available for them to harass attack abuse i am not bothered about them i am not going to answer for their sake no i am answering straight for the real people who want real enlightenment if you want real enlightenment because only guru knows what has to be imparted in you and where you have to be given a breakthrough no teaching no tatva can because tatva and teachings all that your mind can digest and make a very cunning structure for you to continue to flourish thrive in your delusion <clears throat> most of the time when people keep only the teachings and leave the embodied guru they become so cunning to make the structure for themselves internally mentally to thrive in their delusion and continue to feel that they are great spiritual seekers or enlightened beings i tell you sumalata it's a straight answer for you if you are a real person seeking for real enlightenment solution is simple attachment and simple obedience towards embodied guru that's it all guru tatva teachings great truths amazing vedanta all this are just to inspire you to reach 
embodied guru. Once you reach the embodied guru, simple attachment and simple obedience. If you are Vedanta, Guru Tattva, all the ideas you learnt, after reaching Guru, if they are trying to stop you, divert you or obstacle, drop the ideas and concepts and philosophies you learnt, not the Guru. Guru is living, real being. Drop the teachings, not the Guru. Living real being is the only one who can transmit the Shakti Pada power manifestation and give you enlightenment. So, Sumalata, this is the direct answer for you and for all the real seekers. If you are a real seeker seeking real enlightenment, simple attachment. Simple obedience to the Guru, that's it. Embodied Guru, that's it. And anything else comes in between you and your embodied Guru, drop all of it. Do Tyaga of everything else. Simple attachment, simple obedience is the only truth. Do Tyaga of everything else other than this one. That's the essence of what I received from my Guru Arunagiri Yogeshwara. This is a big statement Paramashiva is giving. Hey, when I incarnate, I assume the body of the Guru, I become embodied Guru and initiate myself and get enlightened. This is a statement he is making to the world. Embodied Guru is the essence of all Guru Tattva ideas, philosophies, principles. Only embodied Guru can give you enlightenment and make you manifest the next, next, next higher level consciousness. Only embodied Guru can give, Guru can give you the breakthrough. Without embodied Guru, with just a philosophy, you only become more cunning. And you create your own structure and justify your delusion. All just philosophy, principle, teachings, ideas, concepts without embodied living Guru only makes you more deluded and your delusion becomes justified delusion. When you learn to justify your delusion, you become arrogant and absolutely nothing good can happen to you. Doomed. So if you are a real seeker, interested in real enlightenment, have real simple attachment, real simple obedience to the embodied Guru, that's it. It's for all real seekers who are interested in enlightenment. Next, Lalitambiga, Ma Lalitambiga is asking, Swamiji, what is the importance of spiritual name that we receive during Samaya Diksha? How does it connect us to all? Dimensions, Lokas, Kailasas. Understand? That name you receive during Samaya Diksha is as per Agama. Paramashiva will shower his grace towards you through that face and Absorb you into that face through the initiation. So that, if for example, you receive the name Ishana Shiva Shakti, then Paramashiva is accepting your offering, your being through that Ishana face and making you as part of Him. So you throw the flower, it falls in any one five face. Means through that face is taking you in and giving you that experience of Paramashivoha. Next question. Nirosha Jayashekara. Swamiji, I want to be part of 10,000 people radiating Paramashivatva. But I have anger that need to be removed. Also, when someone left the body, 
can that soul be around without taking another life? Understand, first thing, I will answer the first part of your question. You want to be part of the 10,000. You just need to renounce your anger. Do Tyaga of your anger and the source of your anger. I think the first question I answered to Sanjay Verma will apply for you also. Nirosha, I know the depth of love you have for me and I do have the same depth of love for you. Just remember our love. Our love is too powerful than any anger you carry. Drop all the anger. I first thing understand. You got me. What more you need? And drop anger towards you and the life. After you got me, there is nothing to be worried. So just drop all the anger. And Nirosha, I know how much you love me and how much I feel you are being. And I tell you, not allowing any other emotion more powerful than our love inside your heart is chastity towards Guru. Listen. Not allowing any other emotion more powerfully than your love for Guru is chastity for Guru. Your anger can disturb our the chastity between you and me. The Guru Karpu, the Guru disciple relationship chastity. So, just not to disturb the chastity between you and me, the Guru disciple relationship chastity, drop the anger. I will take care. And the second part of your question. When someone left the body, can that soul be around without taking another life? Yes. It does happen, especially when they are murdered or committed suicide. Accident, murder, suicide, all that kind of souls exist like that. One Maheshwara Puja will solve the issue. They will be liberated. So now, with this, I will move to the initiation. Understand? Before the initiation, some of the devotees' birthday blessings. Sona Kamat's parents, Sunanda Pangarkar, Sharat Pangarkar, wedding anniversary blessings for both of you. 53rd wedding anniversary. Only In India, we celebrate this 50 years up together and all this. <laughs> it's a common thing in India. <laughs> I'm so happy. Sarat and Sunanda Pangarkar, blessings to both of you. With all the auspiciousness and health, you will live a long, happy, blissful life with me. I'll be with you. Sarat Pangarkar, I'll heal you also. Next, Harish Hadley's wife, Lata, birthday blessings for you. With all the auspiciousness, you will be with me, I will be with you. Blessings. Yuan Jin Yu from Malaysia. Yuan Jin Yu, birthday blessings for you. I am with you. And... I have one more important, beautiful gift to share with all of you. Something very near and dear to my heart. See, these five things are too important in my life. I love them like anything. Arunachala Hill. The embodiment of Paramashiva. Bidhi Banyan tree. Kailasa Hill in China, in Tibet. Ganga, the temple tower of Sundareshwara, 
all these are so dear to my heart that's why i put all of them as a part of the kailasa flag today we fixed a permanent web camera for bidhi banyan tree 24/7 to have live darshan actually i did it for myself for my sake we did it i decided to open that to all of you it's now for all of you 24 hours you can have darshan of paramashiva in the form of kalpa vriksha bidhi banyan tree in adi kailasa before going to work any work just have one click and have darshan and ask kalpa vriksha paramashiva in the form of kalpa vriksha he will give you the boon go and do the work it will be successful make this as your lifestyle so nice to have this 24/7 fully live darshan of paramashiva in adi kailasa you can see now even now the monkey is playing on <laughs> the bidhi kalpa vriksha <laughs> adi kailasa kalpa vriksha hmm? i did this for me i have decided to open it for all of you so live view of adi kailasa kalpa vriksha i changed that into bidhi from vriksha paramashiva kalpa vriksha adi kailasa paramashiva kalpa vriksha so you can have live darshan 24/7 my blessings i give you the boon anything just have the darshan in your cell phone darshan of kalpa vriksha offer your prayers and go and do the work you will be successful whether you are going to as per a increment promotion to your boss or you are planning for your argument with your wife even in argument with your wife you will be successful have darshan of bidhi <laughs> adi kailash kalpa vriksha paramashiva kalpa vriksha then understand the power of paramashiva kalpa vriksha because under this tree only devi started listening to paramashiva it's too powerful it's too powerful enjoy enjoy so now initiation i empower you from today all the process i conduct will work for you the spiritual umbilical cord is established between you and me with this initiation i empower you every day sariya pada live satsang See, ordinary people when they attend the satsang it's only a knowledge there is it when a initiated disciple attends he receives solution and boons powers same way when an uninitiated person does puja he gets peace but when an initiated disciple does puja he gets connected to paramashiva when uninitiated person does nityananda yoga he gets health but when initiated person does nityananda yoga he gets kundalini awakening when uninitiated person listens to jnanapada and manifest tries to manifest powers he will have small small solutions small small clicks maybe one or two powers but when a initiated person does this he will have all powers and powerful cognitions and enlightenment itself so i give you the initiation today and authorize you empower you all to have everyday satsang sariya pada everyday aatma puja kriya pada yoga pada everyday nityananda yoga everyday jnana pada power manifestation and powers so with this
Yes, it's time for initiation. Take the leaf of Gayatri Mantra in your hand. And recite along with me. Om Bur Bhuvaswaha At Avitur Arenyam Bargo Evasya Dimahi Diyoyona Prachodayat Om Bur Bhuvaswaha Tat Avitur Varenyam Bargo Evasya Dimahi Diyoyona Prachodayat Next, Shiva Mula Mantra समय दीक्षा, शिव दीक्षा, ओम, हाम, हाउम, शिवाय नमः, ओम, हाम, हाउम Shiva Yanamaha Om Aum Aum Shiva Yanamaha Third Mahavagya Listen and chant Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham So now, pick up your Atma Linga, keep in your hand, sit with the grace of Paramashiva. I am going to connect all of us with Paramashiva and Shri Kailasa through this initiation. Sit straight, keep the Atma Linga in your hand, chant the Mahavagya intensely. Sing Ulla, Tabu Nadanam, Tam Gum, 
காலத்தில் தகதி மிகதி நிலாடுதல் மட்டுமா நடனம் அடிக்கிற பறையின் இடிக்கிற இசையினில் துடிக்கிற துள்ளலும் நடனம் Bless you all. Let's all radiate with integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching, causing, living Shuddhatvaita Saivam. Living and radiating the state, space, powers, being, superconsciousness and Shri Kailasa of Parama Shiva. Parama Shivoham Om Nitya. Yananda Parama Shivoham The eternal bliss Nityananda Thank you. Be blissful. Shri Kaila Sonata Vagashana Shamala Pita Ruda Shri Meena Shiva, Putra Ratna Kumara, Guru Mandya Tulya Avatara, Shri Parvati Stanya Mara, Labda, Divya Jnana Vishruta, Sakana Dika Maga Masara Bhuta, Dravida Veda Pravartaka, Shivan Parama Shiva, Karuna Samadhikata, Bukta Maya, Chavira Shrayana, Kriya Mara, Chantra Chavana, Shri Chinna Kaharati Samast Virata Valya Rantrita Jnana Vijnana Chakravarti Sarvajana Sangha Satyo Chata Nirvana Diksha Vyaya Pavarga Shri Muta Paramata Kalabheta Keshari Shaiva Siddhanta Stapana Acharya Shri Raja Adhiraja Pandya Maharaja Shabana, 
Nityanandam, let's start the power manifestation session. Let's sit straight, visualize Bhagavan in third eye, and chant the Sadguru Vandanam. Nityanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Yanam Urtim Vanvadikam Savasham Tatpamasya Vilaksham Ekam Nityan Damalam Achalam Sarvadi Sakshi Bhotam Bhavati Tam Triguna Rahitam Sadgurum Tam Namai Nityanandam, welcome to Sri Kailasha Kotiya Manifesting Pass Session. Welcome everybody. Such an intense darshan, diksha, powerful cognition and leading us into higher and higher reality. How beautifully Swamiji every day just makes the Thyaga as our reality. Only Guru can do that for us. We living in that mind, 
such a small thing to replace what could be experienced by the ultimate we are struggling with the small unit called mind here bhagwan really pulls us out and gives us the extraordinary experience the diksha into the highest reality the mantra diksha and the wonderful space of tyaga for us to understand the sri kailasha how it is expanding us the quality of consciousness it is the will persistence from ji says in one satsang he beautifully says the will is the sankalpa you declaring something you have already seen it happen so beautifully when you see something for yourself which has happened such a beautiful space and you hold that space again and again to the highest reality highest possibility and highest powers that swami ji will manifest through you for that possibility to happen in you again and again that will persistence this tyaga he says such a beautiful space of how he held himself so high in all the prosecution that is happening and happened he doesn't give even one small doubt whether things are fine things are not happening or is this the way what is happening why is it happening thousand questions come to us when somebody doesn't even feel even iota of something happening here it's like is it wrong that we are feeling something that is how we feel when we are seeing him that he is not even disturbed we have heard only stories of one or two years of mahabharata or rama going through difficult times and all that even with sita 13 and 1/2 years he had only biggest wow, beautiful space we did not suffer but here swami ji of 10 years he is in public the prosecution is happening and he is dealing as though nothing is happening around him absolutely in parmashanta swarupa in such a oneness with parmashiva he doesn't even bother what is going on outside that space he is in such a oneness such a beautiful space he says unclutch oneness presence of swami ji everything completion all are one and the same when you live the space of tyaga you are only doing the tyaga or only giving up the powerless space only that which is not you so when we live in the space of zero powerlessness we are only expanding and expanding the quality of consciousness in us starts literally manifesting as reality swami ji says he will shower boons if we start living the space of parameshwara as our reality again and again aligning to that in our inner space and not giving even one iota of anything else other than parameshwara other than the complete oneness with parameshwara living only the presence of parameshwara inside us and again and again not getting diluted or diluted in delusion with what is going on around us the resources that he says always go to the space of parameshwara instead of outside for dealing with anything he says how he is expanding from one adinam to another to another in bigger and better and beautiful way and not that stopping the first one but expanding the first is expanding the second expanding everything and beyond he is able to expand everything just not by letting go but by taking more responsibility more and more responsibility is the space of tyaga leaving the comfort zone and understanding the presence of parameshwara is making everything happen not we are doing anything other than taking the responsibility of more and more things around us the highest reality is experienced one which is ready to see that expansion as part of tyaga not the comfort zone the more and more expanding into the and ahad asserting the higher reality as our identity the inner image the outer image the others image all images aligning to parameshwara space parameshanta space 
is Tyaga Swamiji beautifully gives us the ultimate space of oneness. From that space of oneness, let's go to the Shastra Pramana today. The Shastra Pramana for the power of removing hair from the body through the third eye is taken from the Shiva Sutra, Sutra 20. Bhuta Samdhana Bhuta Pritaktva Vishwa Samgattaha Bhuta Samdhana Bhuta Pritaktva The Shastra Pramana for the power of removing hair from the body through the third eye is taken from the Shiva Sutra, Sutra 20. Bhuta Samdhana Bhuta Pritaktva Vishwa Samgattaha Bhuta Samdhana Bhuta Pritaktva Vishwa Samgattaha Shiva Sutra, Sutra 20. Shiva Sutras are such amazing Sutra. How Swamiji beautifully says, till you come to Guru, everything that leads to Guru is one space that we need to understand. But once we come to Guru is Guru Gita. Only surrendering to his Guru Paduka is the ultimate oneness. Just carrying on the instruction, whatever Guru says, and having simple obedience and simple attachment to Guru's words and Guru. That is all we need. It is such a beautiful space that he created for us to understand the highest reality. Here, whether we are going to put things together or separating things or bringing things together, all these powers simply happens. The consciousness becoming matter the matter becoming consciousness, dematerialization or materialization simply starts happening in oneness of Paramashiva. In only the Nitya Ananda, the space of blissed out in your heart is simply the Guru decides and guides you to the highest reality. When we are in reactionary assumptions, Life becomes very difficult for us to expand into the next reality. It is only as a human where we struggle and it simply keeps coming. When we are born as human, it is free given that suffering that is part of us. But only when we start living the higher reality, we start going beyond this reactionary assumptions. Constantly when we are in reactionary assumptions, we are deluded into more and more sufferings and more and more problems. This powerless space, which doesn't even exist, which is created by us, is only the reason why we are not manifesting all these powers. Tyaga of all this powerless space, which is not even ours, the delusion, reactionary assumptions. How can we be without reaction? But reaction does not help us. The one thing which helps us even more to get out of the reaction and have a result is a boon from Paramashiva is Tyaga space. Again and again aligning to the oneness, again and again unclutching from this world or living in the presence of Swamiji inside you continuously, all are one and the same, continuously you are living something beyond the reaction or delusion. How we the whole day we are just sitting, we get dirty and we go and take bath and clean ourselves. Getting dirty, we don't do anything. It just happens to us. Only cleaning we have to do. Same way, when we are born, suffering is given to us. It is like part of us which we carry and we just start living it. It is free for all of us. But getting beyond that and living the presence of Paramashiva is our responsibility to go beyond this delusion, this dust that has formed on us, simply a dust layer like on a mirror. It is just a dust layer covering us from the higher reality, just wiping it off and completely living in oneness with Paramashiva. 
the Paramashanta Swarupa, each word uttered from the great reality, Swamiji himself residing in our heart and manifesting each powers, even as a daily life, even as a simple making coffee or making a huge decision, Swamiji says he will shower as boons when we start living the Thyaga, when we understand to give up this powerless reactionary assumption and live in the Paramashanta Swarupa, that he is the one who is deciding every act of us, every word of us, every thought of us. Only aligning to that cleanses the whole being inside us, inside our heart, and completely fill it with only Paramashanta Swarupa, that is Swamiji himself in your heart. As your thoughts, as your being itself. So living that beautiful space and understanding these great things happen beyond the space what we understand as our reality. Only when we start living these things, we start seeing his showering on us and start understanding that we can also possibly manifest the highest reality. We'll go to the instruction today. So you can take a camera and take a picture of on your body part and simply you can sit down, contemplate on Thyaga. Is it giving up or not giving up? Is it what you're giving up? Is it worth it or not worth it? It is the ultimate every moment that we spend in the higher reality. It's like we are in the complete oxygen zone, what happens? We are in such a fresh, beautiful space. Same way, the more we are in the Paramashanta Swarupa, more we are that Swamiji is residing in our heart and manifesting our reality, the more we are in oneness with that and unclutching from this delusion world. Again and again, whatever happening in this world, the good, the bad, whatever, it is still a delusion then what are we fulfilling? We are fulfilling our space of whatever happening that we want to do is manifested through us. We came here to celebrate Paramashiva and he to manifest the reality around us to celebrate more that it's all getting manifested exactly how it should be done, exactly how Swamiji is living. The whole manifestation around him is simply happening because he is in such a oneness space and he himself enacts the whole Leela just for us to remind us again and again the delusion that we are in and that can be overcome by simply renouncing that mind that constantly put us to the powerless space. Mind is always negative which only thrives on negativity and creates this delusionary world for us to only suffer. Just letting go of that and seeing beyond that, that there is a space of oneness with Paramashiva, which is the sweetest space, which is the nectar which starts happening inside us. Contemplate on the truth and start understanding all this dematerialization, materialization, how Swamiji manifests so many boons in all of his devotees, how such a beautiful space simply happens by just one word from Swamiji, not more than one word. He said, I'll take care. That's it. Everything is changed. And after that, everything is such a beautiful space and everything is showered on us. One word can change our life so much. Then what could we do if we live that space in us continuously? So live that beautiful space of oneness. Swa hold that space of oneness in you, in your heart, and visualize Swamiji in your third eye. Continuously chant the Mahavakya, the Mantra Diksha that Swamiji gave into your heart again and again from your navel center. So beautifully, your whole being vibrates in it. And let's get into the meditation. Let's sit straight. Visualize Swamiji in your third eye. Your head, neck, and back should be in a straight line. Visualize Swamiji in a third eye and continuously contemplate on this great truth on Thyaga and chant the Mahavakya Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. Om Nityananda
beautiful experience the photo before and after how you have experienced it and how swamiji has manifested in you <laughs> sorry for the technical Please go ahead and share with Sri Kailasha Kotiyar manifesting power. And more and more, when we enrich, we are pulled out of delusion. And when we start causing others, we are liberated completely. We start experiencing the oneness of yoga. Only from that space, causing even happens. Causing is literally cloning each of us. The highest reality can only be cloned because it's in the space of consciousness. Again and again, Swamiji makes us the highest possibility. Yoga darshan, diksha, powerful cognition gives us yoga para, kriya para, and makes us manifest just as a, such a simple thing through us. And all we need to do is share that with the world, cherish that moment continuously the whole day. How? excited you are when you manifest the powers. So many people sharing that great excitement, the Nitya Ananda space in you. Share that again and again with everyone else and remind them of Swamiji's Darshan and Diksha. Just one Diksha, simply they will be in one Sutta and they can also experience these greater reality. Don't forget to share this in every day Facebook at least in 10 new groups. That way, not just us, but so many billions can be manifesting these state powers and get out of this delusion and live as a 
enlightened me the sri kailasha space of parameshwara such a beautiful space and swamiji beautifully has given us the nityananda gurukul the ultimate gift literally can can be thrown into this highest place very easily the mother had given this as a best gift and completely and completely just two hours every day every weekend once in a week just for two hours you can experience the highest reality the kids love it you can just come for a demo class and see how beautiful these kids are growing under swami ji's guidance directly and manifesting huge powers so you can enroll your child in tiny.com with plan like in case or you can enroll yourself to experience you don't have to know anything except you can one second and you can enjoy that space at the just see with the kids all you need to do is enroll into tiny.tiny.tinyurl.com/acharya-registration such a intense space that swami ji is creating all around the world wherever you are from your home just log in for 2 hours a week and you can experience the gurukul space in you also the most beautiful gift that swami ji has ever given is a nitananda gurukul for every child to flood into the most beautiful space of oneness with swami ji so go ahead and enroll yourself and your kids into the nitananda gurukul such a beautiful space that swami ji has created let's end the session with deep surrender gratitude and oneness with parameshwara anything we are experiencing or not experiencing whether we understand or not understanding always surrender to swami ji's lotus feet so that we start expanding more and more because in at guru padaka only the expansion starts the life at guru padaka kamla padaka is where the disciple starts understanding the higher reality so let's surrender all that we manifested and all the powerful cognition to swami ji's lotus feet and with deep seeking and prayerful space in gratitude continuously request swami ji to make thyaga as your reality with that let's end the session with a purna mantra om purnamada purnamidam purna purnamudashyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमाताय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सवते श्री निंदपरमश पदकाकनमस्त थैंक यू एवरीबडी थैंक यू स्वामीजी सी यू ऑल इन द नेक्स्ट मैनिफेस्टिंग पार सेशन थैंक यू निंदम